everyone, it's Sunshine and welcome to my studio. Now today folks we are talking all about brushes, basically because I bought some really fancy brushes online and I want to show them to you because they're so nice. These are the brushes, uh, they are by Silver Brush, they're the Black Velvet Voyager set. Now what the Voyager set is, is a travel set. I had no idea it was a travel set, but I'm really glad I got the travel set because it's so pretty. So let me show you what they look like, I can't wait. This is the package that it comes in because it is a travel kit. It comes in a really nifty travel package thing. Oh, it comes in a little package like this because it is a travel kit. I didn't realize it was a travel kit when I bought it. I literally just bought it because of the brushes. So it was a nice little surprise when it came up and was a travel kit. And it's quite a good little travel kit. Like it's kind of what's this word I'm looking for? It's quality. Like the stitching's nice. It's decent shape and diff decent feel and I like the logo. Okay, so when we open it, we have some stuff on the right hand side from Silver Brush, which I guess is advertising stuff. And then underneath that, we have this plastic, which I guess you could put like other paint, other brushes, other things that you would travel with basically. But this on the left hand side here, these are the brushes that we are very excited about. These are silver brushes, Br brushes, brushes. <laughs> These are Silver Brushes Black Velvet Travel Edition. So they are so nice and so beautiful. They're pure black and they've got this like gold band around the middle and they're just the nicest brushes I think that I've seen in a very long time, you know? I've got a size eight here. I've got a size six. I've got, oh, I've got a size four. And I've got a size two. I got these sizes purely because this is what I need at the moment. These brushes are definitely the right size. So exactly what I'm trying to upgrade from. And I got them because I read a heap of reviews that were amazing, but also a couple of really great friends of mine who, who are also watercolor artists. They told me that they're really great brushes. However, I don't know if they're gonna be any good. So let's go test them. Our first test today is the bristle test. And basically what the bristle test is, is if I pull the bristles and there's some bristles come out of my brush, it means the brush might be a slightly cheaper brush. I don't expect any bristles to come out of these brushes because they are quite good quality, expensive brushes, but we're gonna see. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring out some white paper just so you guys can see whether any bristles come out. So there we go, we've got some white paper, we've got our brushes here, and we're gonna do this for all four brushes. Our first brush, do we have any bristle movement? We are bristleless, excellent. And <laughs> I've got them rolling, stay where you are. Stay, thank you. <laughs> brush two, do we have any bristles? Nope, no bristles, excellent. Brush three, do we have any bristles? Nope, excellent. And last but not least, our tiny one. And we have no bristles, that's excellent, fantastic. I mean, I wasn't expecting a huge amount of bristles from these guys anyway, but it's always good to check and make sure because if I lost a heap of bristles, I would be slightly concerned. Alrighty, so test number two is hand feel. Now basically what I'm talking about hand feel is how they feel in the hand. And these ones are a little bit different to most brushes in terms of hand feel because they're hollow in the, in the, the rear here and it makes it quite light on the hand. But I don't know whether it's gonna be a problem or not until I start painting. Like it could be good, it could also be bad. I'm not sure about exactly how it's gonna feel. But otherwise, it feels really nice. I don't mind just initially that it's lighter. You know, sometimes how you put things in your hand, it's like, mm, that don't feel right. This feels fine and it feels nice and I feel like I could have a reasonable amount of control with that. All right, so the third test we're going to look at is softness. 
The third test today, folks, is softness. And why do we need to know about softness? Well, in watercolour painting, the softer the brush is, the more water it's going to hold in the brush. So we want a nice soft brush. And I'm going to test this by just running it across my wrist like this. The wrist is a really sensitive area on the body. So this is a really great place to test the softness. And it is super duper soft. Oh, it's so nice actually. It's probably the softest brush that I've ever used. So hopefully it means they're gonna be awesome. These are half squirrel and half synthetic brushes. And what that means is the squirrel part of the brush is what brings the softness to it. But it's also what's fantastic at keeping the water for the brush. We have a look at this part here on the brush, this little bit here is called the belly of the brush. And the fatter that is, the better it's going to retain the water for your watercolor painting. And this has a little bit of a belly, which is really lovely. But the synthetic, what the synthetic does for us is it also helps us maintain a point, which is fantastic for me because I'm quite a detailed watercolor artist. And so I will be able to achieve more of a point with my artwork as I go along, as well as keeping this nice, soft, beautiful watercolor look, which is perfect because that's exactly what I want to achieve. Anyway, so it's nice and soft. <laughs> Okay, so the next test, we're actually going to be doing some watercolor painting tests because they're watercolor brushes. But first, I wanna show you something super nifty. This was very exciting when I first worked out this is what happens. Now, the reason that these brushes are hollow in the back is because they do this. Ooh. And then it goes onto woo, the tip of the brush like that. So you can travel with them and keep your brush's bristles safe, which I think is so cool. Uh, well, it might not be cool if the back is too light, but at this point, it's very cool. Anyway, let's get stuck in to the watercolor tests. Okie dokie, let's actually start testing the watercolor brushes with some watercolor stuff. So I've got my nifty watercolor here. Now all my watercolor paints today are Daniel Smith watercolor paints. They're the ones I use all the time and we're going to be testing with phthalo blue. So I've got my large brush here that we have. I'm just gonna fill that up with water. And what we're going to be doing is doing a loop-de-loop -loop test. Apparently, according to the internet, this is the best way for you to test a watercolor brush. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, let's give this a crack. Okay, it's not as smooth as I was hoping it would be, like it's catching a little bit at the top of the arc of the, the loop, which is a little bit concerning, but let's try the one down from that. So this is going to be the size six, and we'll do exactly the same thing with that. Okay, all right, this one's a bit easier for some reason at the top of the loop, it's a bit easier. Anyway, okay, that's cool. So before we go any further, let's have a look at the two that we've got here. So with the larger brush, we've had more catching at the top of the loop, whereas it's not caught so much on the smaller brush, which is weird. I'm gonna keep going down with the brushes just to see if there's any difference as I get smaller and smaller. So let's go down to the number four brush and do exactly the same thing. And see, that one's catching even more. Weird. Maybe I'm just really bad at doing loop-de-loops, but I don't feel like it is that. Yeah, okay, really odd. Um, all right, now, obviously, we have to do the smallest one, which is two, and exactly the same thing. I didn't put enough water in it. This is the problem with the smaller brushes is obviously you're not going to hold as much water, but the control's better with the small brush. Again, I'm not sure if it's because the back is so light. What I'm going to do is I've just got my other little brush here, which is just a, a terrible one that I got from the art shop. It's like $5 worth. And I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing down the bottom here, just to see what a really expensive brush looks like compared to this cheap brush just for argument's sake. So let's do this. To 
be perfectly honest, <laughs> this is almost standing up better than those brushes. Um, cool. That's not exactly the outcome that I was hoping for. Um, <laughs> it could be that these brushes are better in different situations, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, cool. Let's move on to the next test because this is kind of awkward. Great. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some fresh paper here for us. What I'm going to do is basically just a line and see how our line turns out. And I'm gonna do it exactly the same as before and we're going to compare how everything goes together. All right, so this is the big one, and number eight. Sorry, it's actually the number six. <laughs> it's a smaller one. But that's really nice. I like the shape that it's got. I love the shape that it's got of this brush. So you can see it's come in from the point and gotten bigger and then gotten smaller again. That would be really amazing for like painting flowers and maybe like grass and that sort of thing. So let's try with that really big one just to get the full effect. The really big one is the size eight and we're doing exactly the same thing. The paint retention in this as well is awesome. Like what I mean by paint retention is how well the paint spreads as we run out of water. And this is perfect. Like it's so good. I'm very impressed by that actually. Let's head down the line to our number four brush. Exactly the same thing. And that one's less retention, obviously, because it's smaller. And then our number two brush. So this, the retention of the brushes is actually impressing me quite a lot. Usually with my brushes, they run out of paint and water a lot earlier than that. So this makes me pretty happy. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> All right, now let's test it to our fully synthetic brush. So this one down the bottom is going to be our synthetic brush. Oh my gosh, okay, that's very upsetting, isn't it? <laughs> so the synthetic brush has got an amazing retention as well. Oh my goodness. So I think I'm liking though how these are drying a lot more than the synthetic. The synthetic brush is keeping it, it's almost all the same tone and the same texture the whole way along whereas the softer brushes have kind of I think because the bristles spread out they're kind of a, it's a different texture as you go along so it'll give different effects I am a bit disappointed about how well it's held the the color compared to compared to our synthetic one. Though I feel like I could have just kept going with that one. Maybe, maybe I just added too much water to that. Let's just try the big one once more, just, just for kicks and just see how long we can go with it. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> so it was just me cutting off short then, obviously. Um, so this could have kept going. So water retention to paint retention is still really good. I need more paper to be able to test that accurately. Oh my gosh, these tests are like so muddled. <laughs> Okay, so for this test, we are making a wash. Now, what a wash basically is, is it's a semi-translucent layer of paint to water. So we're going to grab our big brush here and wet down our paper. So we're going to do a little square here. Now, this has got a little bit of blue color to it already because our water has blue color in it already, but we're going to wash that down like that. And then we're going to get some more blue and just add it to the top of our wash. So we're making a kind of a gradient effect here. And this seems quite nice and easy to do. It's adding a nice amount of paint to water. And it's got a really beautiful blend. Like the blend is really seamless and very elegant, really. So what I'm looking at here is how it's dispersing the paint and the water over the paper and also how it's retaining that water and paint in the brush itself and it's blended really nicely together and it's given us a very smooth blend which means it's it's done a great job let's move down to size six 
So we're going to do exactly the same thing and wet down our little square. All right, let's add in our paint now. And this is very similar. So the, the brush is retaining a nice amount of water to paint and it's giving us a really nice smooth gradient and blend. Moving down to our four now. So I've just loaded up my brush and we're doing exactly the same thing. And even the four is keeping a nice retention of that water and paint and giving us a nice gradient. And if we have a look at the dried ones over here, it's a nice smooth blend, which is exactly what we want. Whoop, let's just add a four to that so we know which one it is. And last but not least, we have our little two brush. I'm just gonna wet it down with the big brush because otherwise it takes forever. And then our little two brush, fill him up. And it's gonna take a little while. But he's letting out a nice amount of water to paint as well. Honestly, the blending of these brushes is really nice. I'm really enjoying how soft and subtle the blending is together. And I feel like they keep a really nice amount of water to paint ratio within the brush itself. And that's probably the squirrel hair that's doing that, keeping that together. Whereas the th synthetic, you'll find it, um, it runs the paint away a lot quicker. So whereas the retention of the water and the paint in the, the squirrel bristles gives us more longevity in our painting. All right, just for comparison's sake, because we've done it all the way along, we're going to use the fully synthetic $5 brush now, just to see what happens, just for argument's sake. So we'll get out blue, and already this is a lot harder for me to blend. Like it's just not moving with the water as much. It, it's feeling actually quite clunky compared to the other brush, which was really a smooth blend. Um, whereas this just feels like I'm having to drag the paint down into the water. So it's not ideal. Okay, in this respect, I think the silver brushes win. <laughs> so the gradient and the wash is so much nicer and the feel of creating the blending was actually really lovely. Whereas the synthetic it's kind of messy in comparison. So there we go. We, I think maybe with the line test and the swirl test, I think one of the problems was because the synthetic hair and squirrel hair together, when you do the loop, it separates a little bit, whereas the synthetic stays completely together. So it's a lot easier to get that swirl. So I think if I changed the way that I painted a little bit, because I've never had super soft brushes before, if I changed the way I painted a little bit and turned the brush slightly as I painted, I think I'd be able to get a better swirl out of it. I think that's, for me, a bit of a learning curve, but at the same time, I think I'm enjoying these really soft brushes. Yeah. Okie dokie, we are at our final test now, which is dry brushing. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my brushes, which I have dried earlier, uh, and just put it in the paint and then drag it along and see how far it gets. So dry brushing is a technique that watercolor artists use for texture or leaves and plants, that kind of stuff, you know? So I'm just gonna get a lot of my paint. I've already got this lovely watered down wash of blue here, and we're just gonna drag it that looks exactly the same as a wet test. That's so cool. <laughs> so I got a little bit, little bit dry here. It could be that they're not perfectly dry, but that's okay. It gives us an idea of what we're looking for in our wet and dry test. So with the dry test, we can see the texture starting to happen here. Um, but in saying that, it still kept a lot of the moisture that I put into this little wash here, so it's not as dry as it could be. There we go, that's better. Yeah, it's really nice though. It's very smooth and it's kind of almost like a, a, a nice pattern that's starting to emerge with this, this dry brushing. And we're just going down a step, so we're on our four here. like that. That's awesome. Just the texture of it is just so nice. Often with brushes, 
you won't get that same texture because this this brush has got the squirrel in there as well it's just it's kind of like it's adding different bits as it hits different parts of the brush does that make sense makes sense in my head and now the last one see look at that texture it's so nice okay and just for comparison's sake of course we have our synthetic one now this one I didn't dry so I've got my little paper towel here I'm just going to give them a dry and we're going to do exactly the same thing yeah so that texture on the dry is much less uniform um, so we've got kind of wet 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 up the top here and then it's started to dry out on the edge instead of a uniform drying pattern so if we have a look at this for example we've hit the dry brush all at once so we've got this beautiful texture whereas here we can't rely on that texture because we really don't know what it's going to do so in this case i think the silver brush is one for sure so guys uh that's all my tests done honestly the silver brushes have stood up pretty well i was expecting a little bit more for the price point because they are quite expensive. I mean, for the four, I paid $169. Um, I know they are the travel set, but that was the only set that I could get all four at once. Um, I know that in Australia, prices are more expensive, so they're probably not as expensive if you live in the USA where they are made, because it just happens to be that art supplies are expensive in Australia. <laughs> but $169, I kind of expected them to be mind-blowingly good but they are definitely a lot softer and a lot better than my five dollar paint brushes which are purely synthetic and I think as I learn and grow with these brushes like I feel like a proper watercolorist now like a proper pro with these these fancy brushes these fancy soft professional brushes and hopefully that will help me grow as a watercolor artist and I'll be able to tell you even more about how wonderful the silver brushes are in the future as I get better at learning to distinguish what a soft brush does compared to a fully synthetic brush. But one of the things I can't stress enough with these brushes is the feel. Like I'm not sold on the lightness of them, but they're just beautiful. Um, they kind of, they make me happy to look at. And when I opened these, these up for the first time, I was laughing and smiling because they are the most beautiful brushes I've ever seen. And I'm sure eventually, as I get better with soft brushes, <laughs> they will live up to expectations. So that's my roundup. I bought these guys because I needed new brushes. So it's not an advertising thing or whatever. So what I'm saying is my honest opinion and I am going to be using these brushes. I'm actually super excited because it's been a really long time to get around and do this review. So they've been sitting taunting me and I've not been able to use them. So I'm so excited to use them. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching and maybe it's helped you along your paintbrush journey a little bit further too. That's all I can hope for. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you find me on Instagram and Facebook. And I am still twitching three times a week now, pals, on a Tuesday, Wednesday night and a Friday night. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button because honestly, it's the only way I know whether you're enjoying this content or not. And hopefully you're enjoying these reviews as much as I am because they're just really fun. <laughs> but that is all. Have a beautiful day, everybody, and keep on painting. Bye!